Went for a tour through the trail today, and when I got to the river, there was an excavator out there trying to take the tree out of the river. It was uh, erosion on the, the river bank from the flooding that we had in June, and this tree kind of fell in the water. So I guess they're going to take care of it before the spring's flooding carries it down to the bridge and causes another log jam. I was hoping to watch them drag it out of the water, but I just got tired of waiting. <laughs> Looked like they were trying to cut the roots or maybe the lower branches that were stuck in the ground. Uh, not a whole lot there that they could get a grip on or whatever. So I was kind of wondering, like this, when they have a log jam at the bridge, they use that excavator to pull them out and stick them up on the river bank. But just I've, I've never actually seen how they got it in here because I'm surprised that it fits on the bridges. And bridges were built many, many moons ago when there were steam engines, so I'm sure they can handle the weight of the excavator. But I'm just actually kind of surprised that you know, they'll fit the width of it because it's a pretty wide machine with the tracks. So I get down at the end of the trail, and this is how they get it in. <laughs> you take out part of the fence. It kind of goes through that way. But I'd kind of like to actually get video of it going through the bridge, one of the bridges, because I'm pretty sure it, you know, it's a tight squeeze for it. I got to the electrician's new location, and I took the... I'm not even sure what it's called, the middle of the motor. It's got the windings on it. 
and I asked him you know, what he thought would actually cause that and he looked at it and he says it, it, it's been overheated and I said well yeah because after it happened I had to get the scooter home and it's pretty heavy and it was going uphill so it overheated that way and I said but when I was using it when it happened uh, that wasn't the case because I wasn't under heavy load at all I was going downhill and it just it just suddenly happened but he didn't really have a any suggestions on what could happen, so... <laughs> so at this point, I, I'm just kinda... guessing it's cheap materials. Piece of crap, actually. And... one of my viewers actually suggested that it could be... actually aluminum, instead of copper. Because China has... this wonderful material I'm not sure if there's an actual name for it, but it's actually aluminum and it's tinted to look like copper. And it's sold as copper. And there's been at least one that I know of, uh, electrician business that went out of business because of this. They wired up a house and, and then they found out about this and they had to rewire it at their own expense. And it just kind of bankrupt them. So, at this point, you know, nothing that happens with the monsters is surprising me anymore. <laughs> so... Would that be the case with the motor? No. The likelihood is there, right? So, like I say, I've never seen a motor do this, and an electrician didn't really give an opinion on it, so... Chances are something's up with that. A big pattern change for Ontario as we head throughout the week as the jet stream dips far to the south and we get a cold front extending from Hudson Bay all the way in towards the Gulf states. Now along it and ahead of it we have a lot of active weather and moisture will be pooling up from the Gulf of Mexico so we have plenty of moisture to work with and that means widespread precipitation over the next couple days. Now what we are going to see is the heaviest rainfall through the nickel belt so over 50 millimeters of rain is possible there and a lot of that rain will change over to snow for northern Ontario especially north and east of Lake Superior where we could see accumulating snow along Highway 11 and 17. Now the timing of the system throughout Monday is more widespread rain, especially heavy into central and northeastern Ontario. But by Tuesday morning that rain will finally move its way into the Ottawa Valley and rain may change over to snow in towards northern Ontario. Um, areas like Thunder Bay could be seeing a rain-snow mix throughout the day on Tuesday and a really raw northerly wind. Now the system will continue to push further north and east, allowing some lake effect showers to linger on Wednesday into southern Ontario. But another system will be quickly approaching for northern Ontario on Wednesday night into Thursday and and that could also bring in the chance for more rain and snow uh, for those days. Now, the wind story is also fairly important. We have gusts starting to really creep up throughout the day on Monday with anywhere from 60 to 80 kilometers per hour across southwestern Ontario. Those winds will really pick up in towards Tuesday for everyone across Ontario with gusts 60 to 80 kilometers per hour and a really cold wind up and towards northern Ontario. Now, we get a second shot of cold air as we head in towards the late week and early weekend and those temperatures aloft compared to the lake temperatures are really different so we get that set up for lake effect showers and even some snow showers possible so looking at this one model this is the american model showing the front moving through friday overnight and then possibly some rain showers mixing in with snow throughout the weekend and especially as we head in towards monday areas north of the gta possibly some higher elevations could be seeing lake effect snow so, we may have some snow coming, finally. This is October 20th, and our first snowfall, like I said many times, is usually the end of September. So, we've been graced with an extra month of summer. Thank you, whoever's responsible for that. But, you know, good things come to an end, and that includes summer, unfortunately. But the nice thing about the cold weather is it makes the warm weather feel all that much better. So... I don't mind it too much. I just don't like it when it gets super, super cold. But got my SJ cam in the window because the fire department's heading out, and it's it's nothing really special. Somebody's carbon monoxide detector went off. But what's different about this is I actually get to see the fire trucks going by the house tonight. <laughs> so it doesn't happen very often. Uh, normally. If there's an accident out on the highway or something, they'll go by because this our street is kind of a shortcut to the highway. 
And that's one of the reasons why we have so much traffic on it. So, tonight was a little bit special. Attention Hanover Station Rescue 1, Pump 9. Respond 239, 11th Ave, Cross Street, 5th Street, 6th Street, CO, no symptoms. Time is 329. Hanover Mobile 1, Firecom, go ahead. Roger, Mobile 1, page acknowledged. Time is 331. Firecom, Rescue 1. Hanover Rescue 1, Firecom, go ahead. Rescue 1's responding, 239, 11th Ave, one on board, belted. CO alarm, no sense. Roger, Rescue 1 with one belted, 239, 11th Ave, cross street, 5th street, 6th street. CO, no symptoms. Caller was asked to wait outside with the windows and doors closed. Time is 335. Firecom, Rescue 1, copies. Firecom, Hanover Truck 9. Hanover Truck 9, Firecom, go ahead. Truck 9's responding to 239, 11th Ave. For a CO alarm. 8 on board, buckled. With 8 buckled to 239, 11th Ave. Cross Street, 5th Street, 6th Street, CO, no symptoms. Time is 337. Firecom, Rescue 1. Rescue 1, Firecom, go ahead. Firecom, Rescue 1's on scene, 239-11th Ave, two occupants. We'll be known as Mobile 1, and with command, and I'll talk about. Roger, Rescue 1 at scene, pump, correction. Two occupants inside, Mobile 1 in command, and Mobile, time is 337. I'm Hanover Truck 9. Hanover Truck 9, Firecom, go ahead. Truck 9's on scene. Roger, truck 9 on scene, time is 338. So, like I said, there's nothing special about it, so I'm not going to play the whole call. I just thought it was kind of cool finally getting the trucks on, on video there. So, the snow getting closer, kind of running out of time to do things, so I'm going to clean up the shelter today. And there's nothing more I can really do with the monster, so I'm going to stick it in the back corner out of the way. So I can make room for everything else that's more important at the moment. But for now, I just, I gotta wait to get over my depression. Because I just, I don't want to deal with the monster. And it just, it's kind of upsetting. So I don't even bother calling about it for a little while. So I just wait till I start feeling better and start getting the urge to actually do something about it. But for now, I gotta clean everything up and get everything ready for winter. Thank you.